The accelerating loss of jobs as it was predicted by the leading researchers in that field during the last decade, has now become very clear to see for everyone who works in one of the biggest industries in the world. When OpenAI revealed its massive natural language algorithm and visual detection artificial intelligences at the start of this year, everyone's mouths fell. Coders and developers with early access to application interfaces quickly discovered new and surprising things this groundbreaking artificial intelligence could perform with only a prompt. It could write respectable poetry, create works of art through music and illustrations, write reasonable code, compute simple sums, and write news pieces with a few tweaks. And as it has become clear now, just one year after its inception, this meant way more for the job market and people realized in the beginning. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you which artificial intelligences from OpenAI have already taken over which job market, what new artificial intelligence that is currently in the works is about to destroy another market even quicker, and finally, what it means for us when large parts of the job market are completely dominated by AI. Every month, over 70 million posts are published on WordPress, which is, without a doubt, the most popular content management system on the internet. Assuming an average article is 800 words long, a guess on my side, but not too long or short, people are churning out around 56 billion words every month, or 1.8 billion words per day, on WordPress. If our average word count assumption is correct, GPT-3 produces more than double the daily word count of WordPress articles. Even if you increase the average to 2,000 words each piece, which seems excessive to me. The two are approximately comparable. Now, not every word produced by GPT-3 is a word worth reading, and it does not always create blog entries. In any event, GPT-3's output appears to foretell a future flood of algorithmic material despite the fact that it is just 9 months old. So, how are all of those terms being used? Developers are creating a variety of apps based on GPT-3, just as the early wave of activity promised. For example, Viable identifies trends in customer feedback, surveys, reviews, and help desk problems, for example, and delivers brief summaries for businesses looking to enhance their services. GPT-3 generated conversation is being used by Fable Studio to bring virtual characters and interactive stories to life. GPT-3 is also used by Algolia to provide an advanced search tool. Developers employ prompt programming instead of coding by supplying GPT-3 with a few samples of the type of output they want to create. More experienced users can fine-tune the algorithm by providing it with datasets of examples or even human feedback. GPT-3 and other related algorithms may speed the use of machine learning and natural language processing in this regard. Whereas previously working with machine learning algorithms required a steep learning curve, OpenAI claims that many in the GPT-3 development community had no expertise in I or programming. It's almost this new interface for dealing with computers, Greg Brockman, OpenAI's chief technology officer and co-founder, told Nature earlier this month in an article. OpenAI licensed GPT-3 to Microsoft, who spent a billion dollars in OpenAI in exchange for similar agreements, but has not publicly disclosed the code. According to the business, selling its machine learning solutions helps support their larger objective. Furthermore, they claim to be able to manage how the technology is utilized by severely limiting access to it via an API. One source of concern, for example, is that powerful natural language algorithms such as GPT-3 might amplify online falsehoods. Another issue is that large-scale algorithms have bias built in, and it requires a lot of effort and attention to reduce its impacts. The GPT-3 drama is entirely too much, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman tweeted at the height of the first hysteria. It's remarkable, yet it has severe flaws and occasionally makes pretty stupid blunders. Deep learning algorithms are devoid of common sense and contextual awareness. So, given the correct trigger, GPT-3 easily parroted the online ugliness that was part of its training dataset. To address these concerns, OpenAI verifies developers and apps before allowing access to GPT-3. They've also established rules for developers, are developing tools to detect and mitigate prejudice, and demand that systems and people be in place to monitor applications for harmful conduct. It needs to be seen if these precautions will be sufficient in the absence of access to GPT-3 scales. 
Researchers would love to imbue algorithms with common sense, a grasp of cause and effect, and moral judgment. Today, they effectively have a mouth without a brain. As long as these characteristics are out of reach, researchers and GPT-3's human handlers will have to work hard to guarantee that the advantages balance the hazards. The walled garden method may not sit well with everyone. Last week, a Luther, a group trying to create an open-source counterpart to GPT-3, unveiled their latest model, GPT-NEO. The initiative bases its algorithms on OpenAI's publications on GPT-3 and trains them on distributed computing resources given by cloud computing companies Core Weave and Google. They've also constructed the Pile, a rigorously chosen training data collection. According to a Luther co-founder Connor Leahy, the initiative has gone to considerable pains over the months to select this data collection, make sure it was both properly filtered and diversified, and disclose its inadequacies and biases. According to Wired, GPT Performance Neos does not yet match that of GPT-3, but it is comparable to GPT-3's least sophisticated version. In the meanwhile, more open-source initiatives are in the pipeline. OpenAI has built a reputation for producing cutting-edge models that can be rapidly commercialized through private beta releases via in-house APIs. Following the huge success of last year's GPT-3 release, the Microsoft-partnered business has unveiled Clip, a neural network that can effectively learn visual ideas from natural language supervision. All that is required is to give the names of the visual categories to be recognized, comparable to GPT-2 and GPT-3's zero-shot capabilities, then apply the CLIP model to any visual classification benchmark. Both the CLIP and DAL eOpenAI models are the result of the ML community's unwavering efforts to merge the benefits of vision and language models. Ilya Sutskever, co-founder of OpenAI, has also emphasized their significance in the future. With Clip, the business attempted to answer one of the community's most urgent questions. Are these benchmark-busting, pricey data-eating models limited to large labs? Smaller organizations and independent researchers would like to get these models, experiment, and develop their own ideas. Though the private beta release and APIs address this issue to some extent, there are still discussions about it. Traditionally, vision models have been trained on manually labeled datasets, which are costly to create and only give supervision for a small number of specified visual ideas. According to OpenAI, the popular ImageNet dataset, for example, took over 25,000 employees to annotate 14 million photos. Clip, on the other hand, demonstrated that it can learn from text image combinations that are already freely available on the internet. In this approach, employing the CLIP model reduced the requirement for costly huge datasets. Though training models like ResNet takes only a few minutes, the computational complexity and enormous storage needs make it difficult to deploy them in real-time. Now, a Collage team has created an even more compact version of CLIP. The image editing app company recently claimed to have created a lighter version of OpenAI's acclaimed CLIP model that can even operate on iOS. To do this, the scientists employed model distillation to shrink the size of the clip model, yielding encouraging results. Given the volume of the dataset and computation required, it felt like a difficult endeavor, the researchers stated in their blog post. It is a bit of a leap to imagine that models like clip, which has been trained by a well-funded organization with significant resources, can be outperformed. The aforementioned changes, such as model distillation, appear to be optimistic for the machine learning community as a whole. It's in our nature as humans to make errors. Computers, on the other hand, are immune to human errors. They are given a set of instructions and must carry them out exactly as written in the code. This is especially critical for tasks like data entry, where a typo can cause havoc. AI will almost certainly replace tasks that require copying, pasting, transcribing, and typing. At the very least, a new AI coworker may be there to double-check your job. Lack of sleep, psychological stress, boredom from repeated activities, and even hangar are all issues that are uniquely human when contrasted to robots. Staying up all night, for example, has an effect on your work performance the next day. According to sleepfoundation.org, a lack of sleep can lead to a loss of attention, slower response times, irritation, and mistakes. Computers, on the other hand, never need to sleep. Unless the electricity goes off, their operating capability remains constant. Similarly, doing the same action and doing the same thing every day becomes monotonous for a human. 
That's why machines were created. Mining, manufacturing labor, and machine assembly are all jobs that put people in danger. There will always be conditions and scenarios where individuals might be gravely hurt or killed, whether it's due to toxic gases, falling items, or excessive temperatures at work. Artificial intelligence may be utilized in manufacturing to not just make processes more efficient, but also to keep human employees safe. Product creation, logistics optimization, predictive maintenance, and, of course, robots are all examples of how AI and machine learning may be used in manufacturing. The future may be frightening, especially when viewed through the prism of science fiction dystopias in which machines govern the world. The true future we face is far more peaceful. Some occupations will be eliminated by automation, but only to make room for new ones in the future economy. So, what is your opinion on artificial intelligences being able to do more and more work that only humans were previously able to do? Is it going to stick to repetitive tasks such as image recognition and specific programming, or do you think that even creative work will soon get outmatched by artificial intelligence? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.